And now, delivered to you straight from the 505's most news-biting source of politi... comma... tainment, it's the New Mexican Inquisition with Danger Cave Arrows. Hey guys, how's everybody doing tonight? Thank you so much for being here with the New Mexican Inquisition. That's right, I'm Kendra Jean Brand. I'm back again. And I'm here filling in for danger because, well, Jeff Apodaca decided to skin him and use him as his vest for his three-piece suit. <laughs> All right, we have a great show for you guys. We have Kevin Kennedy, local comedian. That's right, and we also have Melody Wells, the developmental development manager of New Day Youth and Family Services. <laughs> but first, some news. Congressman Ben Ray Lujan has been elected into U.S. House leadership. That's right, he's going to be working alongside Nancy Pelosi who, if you didn't hear, recently got the nod from recently elected uh, Zoshi Torres Small to reclaim the title of Speaker of the House. So now that New Mexico uh, has gotten on board with the status quo of Washington, D.C., I think that we can kind of relax and say, if it's good enough for New Mexico, it's probably surprisingly inadequate. <laughs> Uh, you may have heard that New Mexico's largest Catholic diocese just uh, filed for bankruptcy amidst large sex scandal claims. It's, it's crazy, uh, and it just proves that their finances are as bankrupt as their morals. <laughs> Farmington's Chevelle Shepard made it to the top eight of The Voice, you guys. We got a New Mexican in the top eight on The Voice. It's the first time a New Mexican has made it that far. And meanwhile, I can't even get onto my boyfriend's top eight on MySpace. Uh, Democratic State Representative Gail Chasey plans to introduce legislation that would allow felons to vote. And Gail Chasey believes that giving them voting rights will kind of forge bonds with their outside community and, you know, make them less likely to reoffend. And you know what? If I were locked up and had to follow politics, that's just the kind of torture that would keep me from having to go back there. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure you have all heard about Cibola High School teacher Bia, who had resigned for being an awful person. She, uh, was calling a Native student a racial slur. She cut another Native student's braid. No joke. Yeah, that's right. But some of the other students, presumably white, have been coming to Miss Easton's aid. That's right. They're saying things like, everybody makes mistakes. She's not actually racist. Yeah, and you know, Miss Easton has a lot of influence on us as students. Yeah, that tremendous amount of influence is exactly what we're worried about, kids. <laughs> and obviously, she's already had some kind of influence. Otherwise, these kids wouldn't be race splaining like Hitler's youth. <laughs> White girls, am I right? Meanwhile, legislation is pushing um, for, legislators are pushing for Columbus Day to be renamed Indigenous Peoples Day here in New Mexico. <laughs> yes, we here at the New Mexican Inquisition absolutely support this initiative. However, if it doesn't come to fruition, we're also okay with just celebrating Columbus Day by getting anything that we want <laughs> via brute force and white privilege. Not actually. <laughs> uh, you guys, 
New Mexico is often the subject of citizenship confusion. However, there was a recent incident where a New Mexican man was trying to get a marriage license in Washington, D.C. And someone in our nation's capital doesn't know that New Mexico is a state. <laughs> That's right. He was refused the marriage license unless he could come up with a foreign passport. When he asked to talk to the, um, the supervisor, the supervisor doubled down. <laughs> Eventually, everything was cleared up. By what, you ask? Maybe they hired somebody who actually knows about the country that they're representing. Maybe they did a quick Wikipedia search. Or they could have just looked at a map. <laughs> All right, guys, we have an amazing show in store for you. Please stick around after these messages. Welcome back to the New Mexican Inquisition. I am so excited to introduce our first guest of the night. He is a local comedian and comedic producer. It is the wonderful, the amazing Kevin Kennedy. I was a house cat If I could sleep 20 hours a day If I was a house cat And that was all I could say If I could just lick myself all day Well, my kitty's name is Major Tom Stardust He loves the girls He grabs their boots than I do, but he helps get him in that certain mood. Kendra and H.W. Bush over there know what I'm talking about. Bow, bow, bow. Well, if you were a house cat, if you could sleep 20 hours a day, if you were a house cat, and that was all you could say, and I was a kitty cat too, then now would mean I love you, and we'd screw. Screw like my house cats do, like bow, 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 How many times I gotta tell you we can't afford another litter kittens in Trump's America? Keep it going for Kevin Kennedy. Yeah, that's right bringing us all of the finest songs that hit us deep in the heart. Here, this is for you. Oh, I got a present, you guys. I got, I got a present. It's a pick to pick the guitar that I don't own. Do I put it? On, give it away. Do I put it on a necklace? You could. You could make it like a little pendant. Okay, that's a little nice. Little decorative what? holiday ornament or something. It's a brand new one. Oh, 
Are you sure you don't want to keep it? I have plenty. I have a package of them in my pocket. So it was like a package of 100 and like this doesn't matter to you at all. So it's a meaningless gift. No, but it's my pick. Oh, OK. And I just played the song with it on your show. All right, well, I'll keep it. <laughs> that was great. Uh, is, is all of your performance via song? My cat hair is even getting on your desk. Oh my no, gosh. Um, I, do, <laughs> I do a lot of different stuff on stage. Uh, I'll do the normal self-deprecating jokes, like I ate Heisenberg, or I look like powder from the movie, and I can attract metal with my hands. You do, or, do you um, look like I, those things. <laughs> <laughs> or I do. Um, I do lots of impressions and things in my act. I think that that's a kind of a dying art. Okay. Um, Are you trying to revive it? One of the one of the ones I do lately is Sylvester Stallone that everybody likes. But as if it was as if Sylvester Stallone is selling an app. All right, we gotta hear it. Hey, you guys like crushing candy? <laughs> Download Candy Crush Three Saga Three from the App Store. So I'm like, I, I don't know, my phone ain't too smart, you know. Uh, Kevin, how long have you been doing stand-up? Uh, it will be 20 years in March. 20 years in March. <laughs> that's insane. I'm a crazy person. That's, that's twice as long as I've been alive. I feel like I'm just not getting good at it. <laughs> it takes time. I've heard it's like a fine wine, you know? Um, uh, and I don't buy wine that's less than 20 years old. I don't get nervous anymore. I don't know if it, it, is that going away for you too? Because I know you do stand up. Um, it depends on the situation, but most of the times, yes, my nerves have gone away. Right, and and so it, like, it's interesting. Like if you wanted to tell people they're just starting this out, you know, they're like, yeah. how how do how I always get how do you possibly get up in front of people and tell jokes on a microphone? And I'm like, how don't you? <laughs> like at, at this some point, point now, it be, yeah, at some point it becomes your your like. And breathing go, mechanism yeah. in some kind of way. Yeah, and like if I go long enough without doing it, I don't feel right. Like I don't, it's, I need it. Yeah. It's like a necessity, you know? Like it, 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 people call it an addiction. It sort of is because I mean, your endorphins go off. You hear people laughing. Um, where can people come out and watch you and get their endorphins going by laughing? I have a show called Headliners Comedy 505. Um, we're rolling into our fourth and a half year now. Um, you can also see me in a show called Anar Comedy. This is our ninth anniversary today with me and Angora, which is pretty cool. Um, we also do a show called Vagrant Variety every once in a while, and it's a variety show, and it has lots of different things and burlesque dance and stuff like that. I like to perform with a lot of different performers. It makes comedy a little bit more fun sometimes if you break it up with a magician or something like that. Yeah. But um, right now, it's every week at the Red Velvet Underground, and we've been switching back and forth between Fridays and Saturdays. Friday, um, excuse me, Saturday, the 22nd of December, I have Sarah Kennedy. Ooh, Sarah Kennedy. Featuring <laughs> Jesse Barbin and always hosted by me. Sometimes I'll headline the show, but it's every once in a while. All right, very cool. We'll, we'll, we'll definitely all go check it out. Um, where can people find information about it online? Okay, so you can go onto Facebook slash Headliners 505 and cool. you'll find all of those shows. And or you can find me. I'm Kevin Kennedy. My thing is public. Very nice. All right, guys, thank you so much. Uh, stay tuned because we're going to be back after these message. Give it up one more time for Kevin Kennedy. <laughs> back at the New Mexican Inquisition and we are so delighted to have Melody Wells who is the development manager I'll get it right at some point in my life maybe not today at New Day Youth and Family Services give it up thank you for having me thank you for being on the show I'm super excited to have you here you do something that is very great for the community and I'm excited to be able to tell New Mexicans about it awesome um, so I've heard that um, New Day has been around for a long time, and when it started, it was Albuquerque's first and only runaway shelter. Is that correct? Yes, it is. Cool. How long ago was that? <laughs> uh, New Day was founded in 1976, um, and prior to about November 1976, um, young people who were running away from home or who were in foster care um, or otherwise were kind of involved in some sort of custody situation, um, were being placed into our detention center. 
gotcha. which a group of families thought was really horrible um, and decided to create a shelter uh, that's more of a home-like setting for young people to be rather than putting them into essentially prison. Okay, so this is back in the 70s. We had like a bunch of hippies maybe running away because mom told them not to cut their hair. <laughs> and you guys gave them a safe, happy home, yes. essentially. Um, how has it evolved since the 70s? <clears throat> um, well, New Day started out with just the shelter. And it was just a crisis place. Um, so there was a short-term period that you could stay there. Um, and then... Typically, we would either try to reunite the young people with their families or um, work with the Children, Youth, and Families Department and place them in foster homes. Um, and we still do this. However, yeah. uh, what we realize is that while shelter is necessary, it's inadequate to really address the problem of youth homelessness overall. Um, and so there are a number of different programs that have come out of that over time. Um, we realize that a lot of young people who are either in foster care or running away frequently um, or sometimes in and out of the juvenile justice system too because we do serve young people that um, are involved in detention. Uh, those young people often don't have enough time in a stable, healthy home in order to develop the kind of skills they need to know how to live a more healthy life. Yeah. And so they don't necessarily learn how to wash dishes or make their bed or wash their clothes or even just how to come home after having a difficult day and um, handle their emotions well or cope effectively with transitions in life. And so um, in addition to them having more traumatic experiences, they also just don't have an opportunity to learn a lot of those skills. So we teach a life skills uh, class, um, a, a variety of life skills classes at our Life Skills Academy. Um, and then at that point, uh, with young people that are a little older, like say young adults, 18 to 22, um, if they still do not have a healthy, safe place to live, we have a transitional housing program for that transition age where they're becoming adults. Um, and they can live with us for up to 18 months while going to school, working, and taking life skills classes to help them become more independently sufficient um, so that they can then move on to their own place to live since they have to grow up a little quick. Is this something that like a 30-year-old like myself or a 70-year-old <laughs> like Kevin um, <laughs> be able to take advantage of? Because I, I think we both need some help with, with life courses and how to handle stress and, you know, doing homework and stuff. I think we're both lacking. <laughs> well, to be honest, a lot of um, our staff often joke that we need our own life skills classes. <laughs> um, many of the young people emerge from the program with um, the ability to do a household budget, even when they're 18 or 19 years old. Uh, we've had young people who uh, graduate from the program and they have $5,000 in savings. And I know that's more than me, so, you know, um, life skills classes are definitely um, important at any age. Um, our Life Skills Academy serves any youth or young adult between the ages of 16 and 24 years old. Um, right, so I'm out. You're, I mean, you could lie, but... Um, I do. Look, you know, I do look twelve. You look. You look young enough. Yes. You know what I mean. And um, I'm short enough, so <laughs> I don't know. But um, so we teach those classes to young people throughout the community. And um, then if they age, you know, get a little bit older, we often tell them to go to sort of continuing ed and different other pro other programs in the state that provide services on a more ongoing basis. Okay. Could you? Um could you tell me a little bit about the statistics regarding youth homelessness, either in general or in um, Albuquerque or New Mexico specifically? Yes. So about um, throughout the state of New Mexico, we know there are about 22,000 youth that will experience homelessness in any given year. <clears throat> um, so that's any child or youth between the ages of birth to age 18. And then in New Mexico or in Albuquerque, um, we have about 4,000 to 8,000 and that number fluctuates. Um, but for the past few years, um, Albuquerque Public Schools Title I Homeless Project has um, come up with the number that's between 4,000 and sometimes 6,000, sometimes 8,000 youth that are homeless. Oh. Um, and it's an incredible number. It's a staggering number. Um, at is. New Day, we serve about 1,000 of those young people. Um, and the difference between uh, what we do at New Day and different other places that might be family shelters is that the young people we serve are alone. They're by themselves. So either they've experienced abuse or neglect in the home and they're in foster care, they've run away from abuse or neglect, or they're in detention and for one reason or another it's not safe for them to go back to their homes yet. So they're not with their parents while they're with us. They're just a young person with a bed 
with another person in the room with them. And they're kind of like, they go to school, they go to work, they go to lots of different things, but um, their parents aren't necessarily an immediate resource. So it sounds like you have a pretty hard job where you're facing, um, I don't know, kind of seeing you know a lot of children who are maybe not having the best situation in their life. How is it that you personally kind of cope with trying to stay optimistic about the future and then trying to give that optimism to children as well? Well, one of the things is um, most of our, our staff have experienced difficulties in their lives, not necessarily to the level that the young people we serve have, um, but we do have staff who have gone through exactly what the young people we serve have. And having them as my colleagues um, and then hearing from them what helped them is really what makes me feel optimistic about their lives. And then I see the young people working hard every day to try and make some type of opportunity for themselves where they didn't necessarily see one. And often that comes through um, our staff really trying to help them identify what it was in them or um, about life that they really loved, that really made them feel alive or excited about life before things started to get that bad or even when things were that bad. Many of our young people have had abuse their entire lives, but there was still at some point a moment where they said, this makes me feel alive in life. And so we try to reconnect them with that spark yeah. um, when, they, when they come to us. And we try to help them really articulate it in their own words, in their own way, and put it into um, their life story so that they can reconnect with that idea and it gives them hope to try and keep going as they move forward. Kevin, do you have a spark from your early childhood that uh, keeps you going through... Um, every kitty song that you do. <laughs> <laughs> uh, with that song, it was written about a particular cat. And, um, was his... that cat from your childhood? No, I had him <laughs> later. It, it, so I was 19 when I got the two cats, and it was Smithers and Mr. Burns. <laughs> um, and I wrote the song about Smithers. He was trying to play my guitar one day. And so um, I think about him, and then it was really hard Like when he died. I had to play his song that night. Oh no. And I almost cried. So like that was that was a little tough. And then so now I just I update the song and I put the new cat in there. Sorry, Smithers, but I I gave you a, a shout out. Okay. <laughs> uh, well speaking of sparks, we do have a graphic here. Is magic. Um, Melody, could you briefly tell us about Spark and what it means for New Day? Um so yes, yeah, so most people know their spark as whatever it is that makes them feel truly alive. And um, for me, I recently kind of discovered that I love running and I love fitness. So that's something where I go out and I actually feel very viscerally alive. Um, and it keeps me going and I have goals and I set goals and I achieve them. And every time I achieve one of them, I feel more competent and more able to comp do other things in my life. It's actually taught me a lot of discipline. So we look for a young person's spark and then um, studies are showing increasingly that um, you, know, you can provide a lot of services, you can provide housing, you can provide food, um, you can even teach young people how to get housing, how to get food, how to get a job. Um, <clears throat> but that without a spark, um, when, when, a different, when a difficult situation comes up again, they may give up on all of it. So yeah. the spark is the important thing. Um, but in addition to trying to um, enliven the spark, People really do need at least two other people in their lives who are kind of their cheerleaders. So two Kevin champions. and I can be your cheerleaders for sure. <laughs> Absolutely. Two cheap champ. You know what? Nobody has ever come see me run a, a half marathon. Text me after the show. Okay. I'll come. Okay. Um, but a person needs a spark plus two champions plus the actual opportunity. So if you have a spark, let's say for drumming, but a drum set is way too expensive and nobody in your community has one you can use. And all these other things happen and there's just no way that spark tends to die. So um, we try to make sure that all young people have at least two champions and an actual real viable opportunity that's not going away so that they can actually pursue that. That's amazing. Well, I'm glad that um, this show is the spark in my life, that I have my two champions here, <laughs> and that I have the opportunity to do this every week. Uh, give it up once again for your guest tonight. We had Kevin Kennedy and Melody Wells from New Day. 
thank you so much for being here. Thank you guys for coming. I really appreciate it. Have a good night, guys. You did a great job, Sandra. You did a great job.